The DAS Data Frame API extends Pandas to work on larger than memory data sets on a laptop or distributed data sets across a cluster. It reuses a lot of the Pandas code, but extends it to larger scale. To see how that works, let's play with Pandas first. We'll, ex we'll extend that off the DAS Data Frame later. So I have 30 CSV files here, each with a little bit of data. Let's go ahead and look at some of that data. I might read this in data in with pandas. So we've read some concrete data from my disk into memories of pandas data frame. Now I can operate on that data very fast. I can say compute the average of the x column, or I can group by the name column and compute the standard deviation of that column. This is really nice. Many people know how to use pandas well today, but when we want to operate on many files or on very large data sets, pandas breaks down. That's where DAS data frame can come in handy. So let's copy this code or pandas code. Let's move it down here. Instead of pandas, we're going to use DAS data frame. So DAS data frame will look and feel a lot like pandas, but it'll have a few small differences. This screencast will go through those differences. So the first thing that happened, we didn't get data right ahead of time. If we wanted to, we can get a little bit here with head. Second, let's go ahead and do our original computation from before, mean. We notice that we don't get out a full result. We get out what's called a lazy result. DAS data frame hasn't actually done any work yet. This file is not yet loaded into memory. DAS will only load that memory in once we ask for a result. We can ask for, for a result with the compute method. So there, we've gone ahead, we've read our CSV file, we've gotten our, our result. It's the same result we had from before. And the main advantage of DAS data frame is that now we can extend this single file and instead look at many files at once. Uh, this would also work if these files were very large. Here they're not large, they're small enough to do quickly, but here we can see the activity of our 12 core laptop and it's reading in many CSV files and computing little, little averages of each file and aggregating the results. Again, we can go ahead and do that again with our group by computation. Remembering to place compute at the end. DAS is going to go ahead and reread through all those CSV files and compute our result. So if you know how to use pandas, but want to operate on larger data sets, DAS data frame might be a good fit for you. So that's the basics, basics of how to use DAS data frame. Let's dive a little bit into the internals. So every DAS data frame is composed of many pandas data frames. These are what we call partitions. So one DAS data frame might be composed of you know, five in this case, or 30 or 1,000 pandas data frames. They'll all be loaded uh, lazily and in parallel. In this case, we also see that our data set is laid out in time, and that's quite useful. If DAS knows how your data set is laid out, it can be more intelligent with certain kinds of algorithms, like joins or random access. Let's go look at how this data looks like in our example. So with a pandas data frame, if we print it out, we get out the data. The DAS data frame is a little bit different. We get out the column names and the data types, which are useful to see. We also see that our data frame has 30 partitions, but it's composed of 90 tasks. So there are 90 small Python functions that must be run in order to execute this entire pandas data frame, sorry, this entire DAS data frame. Each partition, let's grab one of them, maybe the fifth partition, is itself just a pandas data frame. So if we go and look at the type of this thing, that's just a pandas data frame. DAS data frame doesn't reinvent a new data structure, it's just reusing pandas. To see that in another way, let's map a function across all of our partitions. So this function is going to take in a pandas data frame and return out something. In this case, we're going to look at the type. And so we can see that we have 30 partitions, each of which is a pandas data frame. We might as well call something like length here to get the length of every partition. 
This function, map partitions, is very useful, especially if you have code that works well on a single pandas data frame and want to apply it in an embarrassingly parallel way across many pandas data frames that live inside of a DAS data frame. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more. Uh, we notice that our data set uh, has this timestamp column. Let's go ahead and let's look at uh, the first and last bit of our data set with head and with tail. And we notice that the first rows seem to be sorted. They're the earliest part of the data set. The latter rows also seem to be sorted. Let's go ahead and set this timestamp column as an index. It'll tell us a little bit more about how a task data frame works internally. This is going to take some time. Dask is actually looking through that column as to read all the data set again to find the minimum and maximum values of that column so that it can track them. So notice our data frame now has these extra values here along the index. These are the values that divide the individual partitions of our data set. So the first partition of our data set has data that lives only between the 1st of January and the 2nd of January. This is again very useful if I want to get a particular second or particular minute or particular day of my data, DAS now knows exactly which file to read. It's also very helpful for joins and other algorithms that might be a bit more complex, or for time series analysis, like rolling aggregations. This, data, this kind of data, metadata, is often not available if you're reading with a file format like CSV, but is available if you use more sophisticated formats, formats like Parquet, which we highly recommend. So let's go ahead and write our data set to Parquet. Dask ahead, going ahead and reading all of our files and writing them all out to Parquet in parallel for us. So that's it. We've seen a little bit of how Dask works. A Dask data frame is many pandas data frames organized uh, by Dask. It allows, it to, allows you to run larger data sets and allows you to run in parallel.